Hi, I'm Gigi Stewart, known to those who follow my blog as Gluten Free Gigi. Coming from a background as a neuroscience researcher, my approach is smart nutrition backed by science and cooking meals that help our bodies. Like a lot of you out there, I live with celiac disease, which means I've had to learn to live and cook gluten free. Who knew it could be this delicious? Five years ago, I started GlutenFreeGigi.com, which then led to the birth of Food Solutions Magazine, and now my new book, The Gluten Free Solution. I love sharing my recipes and ideas with folks all over the globe. Today, thanks to Ingalls, I'm going to cook with you and share some great gluten-free recipes. Let's get going. Today, we're starting out at Ingalls getting the ingredients to make a butternut squash risotto. You can find a list of ingredients and instructions right under the video player so you can print a list and take it with you or pull it up on your phone when you're at the store. Now let's get cooking. All right, we're back from the store and I have my prep station all set up. We are going to make a delicious, unctuous, creamy butternut squash risotto. You will love this dish. You can impress your guests or make it for a weeknight family meal. The first thing we want to do is have some broth on the stovetop. I've got that here, two and three quarter cups of chicken stock. If you're vegetarian or you just want to use some veggie broth instead for a change, go ahead and use that. You can grab that at Ingalls. And also, we want to have some butternut squash. I've pre-roasted some at 400 for 20 minutes. You can pick that up already cut up for you in chunks like this at Ingalls in the produce section to save a little time. So set your uh, butternut squash aside, have your broth on warm, don't boil it, just keep it on low, and we'll get started. I've got a pan here over medium high heat, and we want to add just a little oil to the pan. And we're going to go ahead and cook a uh, little bit of celery I have diced up. If you don't like celery, you just go right ahead and use some onion. No problem there, same amount, a quarter cup. And so we'll let this cook for just a minute until it becomes translucent. And when your celery starts to look a little translucent and get tender, we'll go ahead and add our rice in. And you can use um, rice for risotto uh, specifically, or you can use just a short grain white rice if you like. Whatever you've got handy, it will work. This will be just a little, little creamier, but we want to stir our rice around for about two or three minutes and um, let it become a little more opaque. You'll see it turn almost all white, but be careful to stir the entire time. Don't burn your rice. All right, so take a look at your rice and you see it's turned this really nice um, opaque color. It's almost completely white, so it's time to add our wine. Now you pour yourself a glass if you want. Um, we'll just pour this in and get a little sizzle. You want to step back, don't get that steam facial there when you pour your liquids into your hot pan. It smells so good. And the wine just adds a little flavor. If you don't cook with alcohol, don't worry. Just go ahead and use a little extra stock there. No problem. Or you could even use water if you want to. So you can see how this has absorbed into your um, rice almost completely. So that's time for us to start sort of the 20 minute process where we're adding liquid slowly. So we want to go ahead and I'm going to switch hands here so I can get to my ladle and I have this warm broth. So in about one half cup portions, we're going to add in just a little liquid at a time. Stir as we go. And the key here, as I said before, to this great risotto is just letting this liquid absorb just a little at a time and staying the course with it. So have a look, just in case you've never made risotto before and you're nervous, do not be nervous, so easy. So have a look at this. As your liquid absorbs, this is what you want to look for. You'll see it, you know, sort of bubbling and you can tell everything's getting thick and delicious and that's just going to be so creamy in the end dish. You're going to love it. But don't worry about this dish. Don't let it frighten you. Just stay with it. Stand here. Stir as you go. The key is not to stop stirring so you don't want anything to burn or get too dry. As you can see, almost all your liquid's absorbed. Then it's time to go ahead and get another half cup portion and go ahead and add that in. Okay. 
You can see as you are adding your liquid in, the rice starts to swell up and it's absorbing all this liquid and it's also absorbing flavor, which is key to a good risotto. So you wanna use a really good stock. If you're looking for gluten-free products like this chicken stock at Ingalls, you wanna look for those brown and kind of off-white colored tags right on the uh, store shelves they can just point you to every gluten-free item Ingalls has. And there are special sections of gluten-free foods, but you can also find products throughout the store with the gluten-free tag. So those will help alert you to what you're safely going to be able to buy and eat at Ingalls. All right, we are ready. You can tell by looking at this risotto. One more ladle full, and with this last ladle going in, we're still gonna stir, but we can take just a second to come over here and grab our butternut squash that we already roasted up. Just put this in here. You can boil your butternut squash if you want to. I just love that extra layer of flavor that we get when we roast veggies. You can roast anything, 400, 20, 25 minutes, you're good. Put it on a pan you sprayed with a little oil. Mm, delicious, look at that. So, so good. So stir this in and keep letting this last little bit of liquid absorb. Be gentle with the squash. You don't wanna crush those up they're tender. And so let the last little bit of liquid absorb into your rice. And then you get to finish the dish. And that looks so good. So what we want to add, lastly, is just a little Parmesan cheese. Very finely grated here, so it'll melt right into that. You can put as much as you like. We've got a couple tablespoons here. Add more cheese if you want cheese. And if you don't eat cheese, just leave that out. It'll still be delicious, I promise. We've got just a little bit of flat leaf parsley in here. And we're just gonna sprinkle that over, stir it in. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at those colors. I love that. And you are all set to go for the perfect gluten-free weeknight meal. We're out of time for today, but I want to thank you so much for joining me here at the Ingalls Table. Remember, you can find this recipe, videos, photos, and more here on the website at ingallstable.com. Until next time, I'll see you online.